Good morning, everybody. I hope your weekend was nice and you enjoy, had the opportunity just to enjoy yourself and perhaps maybe catch us for Mass, either us or somebody else, EWTN. A lot of places, they live stream Mass for Sunday and give some thought as we uh, celebrate the fifth Sunday of Easter, Easter season. Kevin was uh, saying to me the other day about you can watch these little gigs uh, on your smartphone. And he showed me on his smartphone this morning, which is sitting right here in front of me. But I told him, I said, I don't have a smartphone. I got a dumb phone. I just have one of those flip jobs. Oh, my gosh, she said. But I said, there's good news on the horizon. I said, I bought myself a track phone smartphone last summer. And I said, it's been sitting in my drawer all these months. But I got 1,500 free minutes with it. And I thought to myself, I better charge that thing up. So I brought it home because it was upstate. And it's still sitting in the box upstairs. And perhaps maybe a little bit later today when I have a spare minute or a, a no, no frills minute, I'll at least charge the battery. Then I'll ask Sister to help me to figure out how the bloody thing works. But speaking about phones, I must tell you about a trip that my brother-in-law Bob and I took some years ago. Bob had worked for uh, Delta Airlines for about 25 years. Had retired back in uh, around 1995, 1993, and uh, he was just doing some part-time work for some little gig that he had, and be a lot of free time. And he said to me one day, he says, "You know, I want to take a trip." I said, "Where do you want to go?" He said, "I want to go out to. I want to cross the country." He had a motorhome. I said, "I want to cross the country and go out maybe as far as Wyoming and to Devil's Tower." but I don't want to go by myself. He said, would you be interested in going? I said, don't ask me a second time. I said, let's pack up. I said, now look. I said, I'm not driving that thing. I said, I'll read the maps and I'll uh, pray a prayer to St. Michael and read the directions so we don't get lost. So off we go. So we left one morning from uh, Whitehaven. We had a house up there, a ski house. And we left up there and, uh, and we hopped on Interstate 80 and we just kept right on driving along playing some music, singing some songs, and entertaining one another with stories. The first night, we were in South Bend, Indiana, the home of Notre Dame. The second night, we were in Rochester, Minnesota. And the third night, my friends, we were in the Badlands. Now, this is around 1993. Phones, as we know them now, were not what they were. But my brother-in-law wanted to call my sister, his wife, every night. And we had a bag phone. The phone actually came in a bag, and it had a battery with it. And what had to happen was you had to check the news to find out when the satellite was going over to, for, in order to catch, to catch the signal. And I can remember uh, on, the, on the return trip, we were, uh, we were in a campground somewhere in Nebraska, uh, and there was corn all around. And my brother-in-law said, geez, you better call home and see how things were. So the, the, cell, the, uh, the satellite was going over at 7.03. So my brother-in-law set this thing up, put the antenna out, and all of a sudden you hear this static, and all of a sudden we got a dial tone. He called my sister, was on the phone with her about three minutes, and said, come on, you want to talk to Frank and say hello to him? And he passed the phone over to me, and all of a sudden it went dead. We were out of the range of the satellite, and so the signal went dead. Always remember that. Boy, phones have changed an awful lot, haven't it? You know, they have these cell phone towers like all over the place now. That these 4G, 5G networks, and uh, they actually put up telephone poles and they, they dress them up to look like trees, and they're all cell phone towers. I mean, if you go around a corner here to Verizon, and around a the corner, they have a great big pole up in the air and all these cell phone towers, and you get a signal almost any way. My car is seven years old. It's a Chrysler 200. I like that car a lot. I'm not planning on eliminating because I'm too old to buy a new car. But anyhow, uh, it has serious satellite radio in it. And I really enjoy that. I pay $44 every three or four months to have that in the car. Because I'm driving. I like to listen. To, this morning I was listening to EWTN. The mass was on. Or I like to listen to classical music, uh, 76. I also like to listen to 69, which is elevator music, and 70 is pop station. You also 
you can pick up uh, the 40s on four, the 50s on five, 60s on six, 70s on seven. So it's a nice little gig. I don't listen to that wild music. I can't figure all that stuff out. But I like certain stations. So anyhow, I went upstate. I was telling Kevin upstate on Wednesday to Kutztown to check on my house. I hadn't been up there since uh, January. I wanted to go up and check on the place, and everything was fine. But coming home yesterday, I was coming down Route 100. And uh, on my way down, uh, I was passing underneath a railroad trestle for SEPTA, the regional train going out to like Downingtown and Harrisburg and there was a light there and I stopped and I'm listening to XM radio all of a sudden it died nothing and I'm thinking something wrong here you know I paid the bill and started the car up again as soon as I got out of the tunnel the signal picked up again and it took me to where I left off there's a little point in that for all of us, and the point is simply, we're all wired for God. And God is constantly sending us, and we are sending to God signals of our communication with Him in the person of Jesus. God is constantly sending His Spirit to inspire us and to help us. But sometimes in life we go through tunnels, and tunnels are dark. And once you, once you go into the dark side, God can't communicate with us. Just like I couldn't listen to the radio because I was under, in the tunnel and the signal could not penetrate the darkness of that concrete barrier wall. And sometimes those things happen in my life. I find myself uh, living in darkness. Uh, I alienate myself from my God, from myself and one another because of selfishness or pride or any deliberate sin. When I went to Kutztown the other day, I was driving through the neighborhood and I passed the Newman Center and I saw they had a sign there. And it said, uh, drive through confessions Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at between 5 and 6 o'clock. Now, I try to go to reconciliation myself maybe once a month. Maybe Father Hand comes in or Father Capone, but we haven't had them for a while. And I thought to myself, when I got back to my house after supper, I thought to myself, you know some, maybe I'll run over to the Sacrament of Reconciliation. Now, I know Father Rich. So I hopped in the car, I went over, drove through the side of the Newman Center. He opens the door, I said, Rich, it's Frank. Or, oh, Frank, how you doing? I said, I'm good. We chatted about everything in life that's priestly. And I said, oh, by the way, I haven't been to Reconciliation in a little while. I said, uh, how about I go to confession? He said, sure. So I do the whole thing. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It's been a couple of months since I went to reconciliation. And I said to him, um, uh, I, I'm not really conscious of, every, of, of deliberately committing any sin. I really don't feel that's a part of me. But I said I have maybe these little imperfections uh, that just kind of are an annoyance. Those little moments of uh, maybe on the edge of the tunnel. And so he gave me three Hail Marys, and I thought, boy, to myself, three. You came to St. Thomas, so he'd get two. But anyhow, he gave me three. So I did my three Hail Marys, and we chatted. And I said, oh, look, I'll see you next trip when I come up. Stay well and stay healthy, and off I went. But it's a lesson for us all. If you're, if you're in the tunnel of darkness, God can't reach you. If you're on the cusp of the tunnel, God can reach out and pull me out. And so I share this with you today. May the grace of God keep us out of the tunnel of darkness so that always, as we make our journey through life, the signal of God will always be heard in my heart, my mind, and my soul and will enrich me as I make my way to my destination to be with God. Okay, folks, have a good day now. Be safe. God bless you all.